G'day everyone, welcome back to the channel. What we're going to talk about today is we're going to go through the top three exercises to treat low back pain. Now, low back pain specifically can be a broad range of things, but what we're going to talk about today specifically is the back pain that presents as a band of pain across the lower back. So how that looks, for a lot of people, we want to talk about the, the, the type of pain that feels like it goes across the lower back. Sometimes it's all the way across, sometimes it's just the one side, but can sometimes travel down into the hip a little bit. Now, it's a really common presentation of back pain because of where it is. Uh, the reason why I wanted to talk about this today is because it's, it's often uh, a huge misconception in terms of what it is and where it's coming from. So when we go through these top three exercises for low back pain in a second, you'll hopefully see that it's a little bit different to what you'd be expecting. Now, what we see with that band of pain across the lower back, so we're not talking about a specific pain where you can put your finger on that spot and that's exactly where your pain is. We're talking about a broader, more vague pain where sometimes it's hard to localize. It's hard to put your finger on it and say, look, that's exactly where it is. It generally feels like it's a, like for most people, it's a band of pain that goes across the base of your spine. Sometimes it's on the one side and sometimes it can go down to the side of that hip or the top, the top corner of that hip. Interestingly, um, we often are quick to label that a disc pain or a, an L5-S1 pain or a pain that's at the base of your spine. Clinically, however, uh, what we find and what I find a lot is that that pain actually comes from higher up. So when we see this broad pain at the base of our spine, there's every chance that it's actually coming from higher up at the junction of your, your uh, thoracic spine and your lower back. So that where the rib cage meets your lower back, that part of your body has a lot of the nerves and neural connections that can refer pain down a bit lower. So what we want to do today is when we're trying to treat your low back pain, we're not actually going to spend a lot of time down on that sort of banded area where you might be feeling it. We're actually going to be spending a little bit more time above and below because potentially they're the most important features to get rid of this pain quickly. So the first exercise is we're going to use a lacrosse ball or tennis ball, depending on what you have lying around. Depending on your pain levels, you might want a tennis ball. This is a lacrosse ball. You might want something that's a little bit softer if you feel like your pain is a little bit greater. But if the pain's manageable, feel free to go for something harder. You can use a foam roller to do the same thing, but for the purposes of this, we're going to show you how to, how to free up that back. So as I said, if you feel like your pain's sort of down low at that belt line, we don't want to be down in here because there's every chance you're not going to find something that feels exactly where your pain is. You might find that as we come up higher towards the base of that rib cage, it's a lot easier to find that source of your pain. So, so basically, if we're going to get you to pop the ball, uh, in the middle of your spine, but just off to one side. So we're going to go this side to start with. And all I want you to do is just gently let the ball press in to your back. Now, what we want to do here is, if you're right next to the spine, and you would have seen this in previous videos, is we want you to gently move the ball off to one side. So we're going to move it towards the camera. And we want to go hunting for something that feels stiff, tight, and potentially tender. Now, what we want to do here is, uh, we don't want to roll the ball. We just want to move the ball around until you feel like you hit something that feels interesting and important. We just want to get you to stay there. And with any luck, what you'll hopefully find is that uh, you put some pressure on a spot, sort of in this area through here at the back, at the back, you might feel like it starts to radiate that pain, the, the pain that you feel down in your lower back. And it's really important that we use a ball for this because as soon as you hit a spot that communicates with your symptoms down lower, you know exactly where that's coming from. And what we find is that band of pain that goes across a lot of people's lower backs, it's often quite frustrating because it sometimes feels like you're guessing as to what it is without actually knowing where you need to be to fix it because it's more of a vague referred type pain. So, so the, the first exercise is just spending a few minutes on a particular spot then moving the ball up a little bit, even coming sort of further out to the side to hit the rib cage to see if that gives you some, uh, some issues as well. Now, this exercise is actually a two-parter. We want to hit this the most and make sure that you're finding the spots that feel stiff and tight. Um, a little side note to this exercise is, uh, 
spend some time on the side where you feel most of your pain is. So for me, uh, I'm on the, the left hand side of the side closest to the, to the camera here. Um, for me, this side feels a little bit stiffer. If I move the ball across to the opposite side, so the same level, but just on the other side, it doesn't feel as stiff, tight, or restricted. So even if I had all of my pain on this side closest to the wardrobe, but I had more stiffness over this side, I'm more interested in where the stiffness is because your body is a system and if there's a, a rusty piece in that system, anything around that be can become sore and tender. So we want to prioritize where you feel the stiffness more than pain, which often sounds a bit strange. But So once you've done that, we want to get the ball and we want to take it down lower into your glutes. Now this is a, a common exercise for a lot of people. So you might find that as you come to the top of the hip, you might start to find something that feels a little bit tender. That's okay, so we're looking for this tightness. So as we've shown in previous videos, once you find something that feels tight, I'm either just gonna get you to stay here, just let the ball sink in, let it relax, let that tissue uh, give and let that sort of tightness go away. But what you can do is, uh, if you're on a part of the hip here, what you can do with your leg is you can rotate your leg sort of in and out. And what we're doing here is we're compressing the tissue and then we're trying to shear the musculature underneath it. Uh, it's a really effective way to, to get that tissue to free up faster. So we can bend and straighten the leg, but we can sort of internally rotate and externally rotate that tissue to speed up how quickly it frees up. Now again, depending on how tender this is for you, choose your ball wisely, make sure that it feels comfortable. You've got to be able to breathe, otherwise you're going too deep or you're going too hard <clears throat> and your body's not going to feel comfortable enough to relax and settle down. So we want to make sure that we're feeding as much slack into this system as possible. Um, and as we said, we're not actually spending, we don't actually need to spend too much time at the base of your spine. We can go to the, the thoracolumbar junction and the hip tissue underneath that and you should feel like those two areas take away that referred pain, whether it's across your back or it's down one side. It's a little known fact that's often missed that that presentation is most likely coming from higher up, but this higher up section often doesn't put its hand up to let you know there's a problem unless you go looking for it with the ball. So, so that's exercise number one. The second exercise is we want to go after the tissue uh, below in that hip area to try and feed more slack into, the, into that section of your lower back. And one of the best ways to do that is through the couch stretch. Now you would have seen this before, we've done this before, but we want to get you into the corner of a, a couch. Um, if you want to make it extra hard, you can do it on the floor. But ideally we want your shin up against the backrest of a chair with your knee in the back corner of the chair. And because it's raised up a little bit, you should be able to comfortably get your foot up um, into this position. So what we're trying to do again is we're keeping our back straight and we're just coming up as high as you feel comfortable until you feel some pretty serious tightness through the front of the hip. Uh, we want to make sure that your, your spine and your, uh, your thigh are in line. You don't want to be sort of off to one side. It's easy to blow off some steam with this stretch by going off to the side and not sort of lining everything up. We're going to stay in this position for 30 seconds to a minute. Take a big breath in. And squeeze, make sure you tense your glutes, tense the muscles of, at the front of your thigh, the front of your hip, push your foot into the back of the, the chair or whatever surface you're on, hold that for a few seconds, and then when you breathe out, you should feel like those muscles have relaxed a little bit, and you should be able to come back a little bit further than before, keep repeating that process. And the reason why this is so important is because, again, another feature that we often forget with back pain is that there's a lot of tissue that attaches to the front of the spine. We're always so enamored by the back because that's the obvious thing to do, but the hip flexors anchor from your, the front of your thigh to your pelvis, but some also go to the front of your spine. So if this is tight, you get this constant tension, this constant pulling, this constant load on your spine from the front. So if you have some spinal stiffness, some spinal dysfunction, then it can be hard to click your fingers and get rid of that quickly because there's this sort of hidden handbrake there stopping you. So we want to try and free up the tissue at the back with the ball or the roller, and then also making sure that we're taking care of some of those handbrakes at the front so that it can settle down a lot faster. So that's exercise two is the couch stretch. The third exercise that we want to touch on, again, is a very simple one. We want to go after the glutes. 
And like most of these exercises, they're not fancy, but we want to go for the, the pigeon stretch. We want to go for those deep glutes, sometimes the piriformis, some of the musculature in the hips becomes tight, either preceding the back getting sore or because the back's sore and telling these muscles to be tight. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what we want to get you to do here is again, doing this on a chair, doing this on a bed, something that's raised, so you're not going as deep into this range. But for the purposes of this video, what we're looking for is we want to make sure that you can rotate your leg to 90 degrees. And then we're just going to try and sort of drop down as deep as you feel comfortable until you feel like you get some tightness or a good stretch in those glutes. So again, if you're up on, on something, it's not going to be as challenging. If you want a real challenge, try and do this on the floor. And what we want to do here is we want to sort of rotate towards the knee, rotate towards the foot, uh, poke your bottom back and just see where your best position is that gives you access to some tightness in those glutes. <clears throat> and then similar to the couch stretch, what we're looking for is a deep breath in and then a squeeze. So tense everything, tense the glutes, push your foot into the ground, do what you need to do to tense up all those muscles, hold that for a few seconds. And then when you breathe out, you should feel like you can drop down a little bit further. And then we want to repeat that process again. So taking a deep breath in, hold, squeeze, push your foot into the ground, squeeze your glutes, hold for five to 10 seconds, and then relax. And you should feel you can go further again. <clears throat> so, <coughs> excuse me, in terms of these exercises, the theme is that we definitely want to respect where your pain is. So we need to respect the fact that that, that pain is there. But with a little bit of experience and a little bit of knowledge and a little bit of exploration, what you'll probably find is a little bit higher than that at the base of your rib cage, the top of that lower back, below that where your glutes are, and in front of that where your hip flexors are, and even some of the tissue in your abs as well, you should find that those areas are also stiff and tight. They may not be tender. The glutes probably are most likely to be tender because they have a tendency to do that. But those other areas above, below, and at the front are often the handbrakes that have been there that lead up to the point where something becomes sore. So the benefit of understanding that is that not only can you try and free those areas up to normalize the function of your back and then allow your nervous system to feel more comfortable more quickly, but once that pain goes away, if you've chipped away at the, t at the stiffness and the tightness above and below and at the front of that dysfunction, you're going to reduce the likelihood that it's going to come back again. Now, the, the final thing which we always want to touch on with these sort of instructional videos is why. Why are those tissues the way they are in the first place? You know, you don't deserve back pain. It's something that happens after a build-up. As I said, some of those things are going to be tight beforehand, but we need to sort of give you some guidance as to what to look for to stop those things from re-tightening once you spend all your time trying to free them up. So again, I've said this a few times, but if you watch these videos, you'll hopefully appreciate by now that the single greatest cause of most back dysfunction in, in terms of stiffness and hip tightness at the back and at the front is sitting, that the positions that you sit in, it's just a thing that we do so much. It's often the common theme that binds most of the activities that we do together. And in today's current climate, You'd be, very, you'd be very lucky to be someone who sits less than what they did before all this kicked off. So we're looking at you know, how you sit on the couch, how you sit in the car, how you sit at your work desk or home desk, how you sit at the computer, how you sit down using your phone, do you sit up in bed to read or use your phone, what positions are you in most often? And what you should hopefully find is once you've used the ball to hunt around this, this sort of higher section than where your pain might be, so if your pain's down here a little bit, and we're saying to hunt around up here for some dysfunction, it's, it, there's every chance that the positions you're getting into day to day, most likely when you're sitting, involve you relaxing and sort of hinging through that stiff section or the section where you're stiff. So if you're freeing all of this up and then not getting out of those positions long term, then you're not necessarily curing the problem. Now, if you're not someone who sits very much, but you're someone who sort of leans over a lot, stands and leans, whether you're cooking or cleaning or whatever you might be doing, it's still very likely that that part of your back is a part that you're hinging through over time without realizing it. Because everything has to happen for a reason. And stiffness and tightness is often the consequence of poor positioning or imperfect positioning. So 
So you just wanted to tie all that together. Um, hopefully that sort of makes, gives some context to the reason why those three exercises are really important, but then also how uh, posture can tie into that and, and why that itself is really important as well. So, uh, so hopefully that was helpful. If you have any questions about that specific type of back pain, please let us know in the comments below. Um, it's often news to a lot of people that that banded pain or the pain into the hip is higher up than what you'd expect, but it's missed a lot. So please don't miss that if you have those symptoms at the moment. Um, and as always, if you enjoyed the video, please, uh, we'd appreciate you leaving a like, but also subscribing just so that uh, these videos can reach more people. Um, and then you'll also uh, be more likely to see the next ones that we put out. So we're putting them out daily. Uh, we're gonna cover a few back topics and a few other how to fix videos. Um, and hopefully that'll apply to something that you have. Um, if you want to sort of speed that process up, please let us know what you've got and we'll do a video based on that uh, with some highly recommended exercises to help. So, uh, so thanks again for watching and uh, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye.